Hello, I'm. Are you ready? Hello, I'm Theo. I'm Adam. And we're Hertz. Hello, Swisscom. What am I saying? That was that right? Swisscom. <laughs> Swisscom Talk. Swisscom Talk. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Swisscom Talk. I'm Theo. Hello, I'm Adam. And we're Hertz. Open Air St. Colin and we're here with Hertz. Hello guys. Hello. Nice Hello. to have you here. Cheers. Good. Uh, welcome back. It's the second time you're here. Um, what happened? What happened in this year? What's the best story you have to tell Everything. Us? Uh, our lives changed completely. Like when we were here last year, uh, we had bigger microphones that we could hold. And now the microphones have got smaller. As we've got, as we've gone on every Our year, stories have got bigger, but the microphones stories have got, have got bigger. We yeah. talk louder, but the microphones have got smaller. We don't compensate with microphones here in Switzerland. I, I mean, this is it's kind of good. It's kind of good. It's a little. If you hold weird. it like this, it looks. It looks like it looks like you've got a little microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever you want, you can do it like this, and then. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> Um, you just played Glastonbury uh, and uh, festivals. What, what is uh, what what is festivals for you? Do you prefer it to do festivals or? Yeah, we love it. It was great. Glastonbury was great, and these festivals are brilliant because they. This <laughs> is funny. Isn't it? They bring everyone together, and they're yeah, they're wonderful. Great, great for our music. Great to be heard in such a big environment. <laughs> did you did you mix with the crowd in Glastonbury? Uh, Yeah. No, I did. I crammed in a whole festival in four hours. So I drank as much alcohol in, as you a whole did, weekend yeah. in four hours. I tried not to get any mud on me. And then I left and I felt like I'd uh, done an injustice to the festival. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what is uh, life like these days? Uh, when, you, when you mix with a crowd or when you're in regular life, do people recognize you and uh, talk to you? Not when we wear tracksuits. Yeah. It's only when we wear these clothes that people recognize us. If you wear like shorts and a tracksuit, no one I does. Wear, um, I wear like a zebra outfit in my spare time. A disguise. I walk around Manchester kind of dressed like a zebra, so no one bothers me. Yeah. Camouflage dress that they don't see you? Yeah. It's all about camouflage. So I just look like a wizard. Yeah, with a big hood and a big thing. You got, yeah. So you said the life changed uh, the last year. Uh, how did you pay the rent before the success? We didn't. We shared a tiny little apartment and one of us had to sleep on the sofa every night and we had well, to change. Well, that was me. That was me as well. Not really. So we had to do that and uh, it was hard. We had a terrible time. It wasn't very nice. Did you do some regular jobs like turning burgers or something? Yeah, I used to cut the grass. I used to be a, a gardener. I used to cut the grass in a graveyard every fr every Saturday, and it was the most horrible job ever. But uh, yeah, I used to just be amongst dead people all Saturday, so it was depressing. Well, if it was only every Saturday, then it wasn't that hard at all. It wasn't that hard. It wasn't that hard. <laughs> it was. It, 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 it took me a week to get over it. Like six week, six days a week, you you were off, and then one day you had to work. Yeah. Cool. Well, How was the support from home when you said, uh, yeah, we're gonna be pop stars? Uh, my father's a peculiar man. He didn't kind of, he didn't really know about my band until he saw a big poster outside his work with his son's face on. And then he phoned me up and said, oh, what's this band you're in? So my father's, uh, yeah, my family came late to the band. Yeah. And uh, do they brag now when they're in real life? Uh, are they in the pub and then say, do you see my son? He is famous, yeah, give me another pint. They're proud, yeah. Which is nice. Big braggers. Big braggers. You what? Big braggers. So they get now appointments earlier at the doctors and stuff like that. When they say who they are. Yeah. Maybe. In Germany or Switzerland maybe. In uh in some obscure countries. Um I wanna do something like uh which which shows your preferences. Um uh, Kate or Pippa? Kate or Pippa? Oh don't know. Who are they? Ping pong. Ping pong. Ping pong. Ping pong, okay, it's cool. Uh, Glastonbury or Wembley Stadium? Uh, Glastonbury. Wembley Stadium. Okay. So you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna do solo, solo careers? Both, essentially. <laughs> Pursue the dreams. Uh, Samuel Cowell or P. 
Here's Morgan. Simon Cowell. Simon Cowell. Um, talking about Simon Cowell, what's what's the best uh, advice you got uh, from maybe other bands, other musicians, someone from the industry? Uh, someone once said to us, "Your songs are rubbish. You got three minutes of good music. Change everything about yourself." And it was the best piece of advice we ever got. And I remember going home and I cried. And then the next day I changed everything. And together we improved. So sometimes you need a nice bit of honesty. And don't let anyone tell you what to do. Don't let anyone change who you are. Be yourself. Because the only way that the only way that people are going to believe in you is if you believe in yourself. It's conviction. Do you, do you get approached now when you're backstage in the in the festival circus? Do you get approached by other bands and then maybe they ask you about your uh, experiences? We we ask. We meet. We like to go. We like to speak to people in bands. We meet. We often meet people that we we like and stuff. And it's all very interesting to hear about why why other people are in bands and what their experiences are. Because they're, they're often very different. So it's, it's good. Yeah. Um, you you you've been uh, the critics darling at least here in, in in Germany and Switzerland and stuff. What's the worst thing someone said about you? Uh, pretentious wankers. Uh, you don't, you don't that we were brothers. People think we're brothers all the time, but obviously we're not, as you can tell. Yeah. So yeah, that's it's not the worst thing. I mean, I don't know. I try not to read things that people write about us. It's dangerous that self-obsession. Don't believe the hype. And uh, what's in the near future for Hertz? Now you are on tour again with uh, with uh, festivals. Will be another club tour and then maybe an album or? No, I don't think so. I think we're going to do an album. Yeah, I think we can see the end of our touring now, and it's exciting to think about writing music again. It's been a long time since we've done it, so for us too, I think the next goal is to write a second album yeah. that we're proud of. How will that project, next album, uh, be? So you said you didn't write at all yet no. for for a thing, and uh, and then you will. What are you gonna do? You go. You go on. We just got to lock ourselves away, and and yeah, it's very difficult, very strange experience for us writing a record. We we got to disappear from everything. We can't really do it on the road. It's very uh, find it very difficult to concentrate. But I want to buy a castle in Latvia and uh, disappear there for two years. Try and be creative. Do you fear that uh, now, with the success and the pressure, maybe uh, people will try to talk to you into stuff and uh, will say, "Hey, you got to do it like that." I think that come with success comes the more freedom, because we we did everything as we wanted to do it the first time around, and we didn't didn't compromise, and we didn't let anyone tell us what to do, and and to, to know that that people have accepted us on, on those terms is. Moving forward is great because it means we've got even more freedom now. So we've got a great chance, a great opportunity now. We've set ourselves up with the first album. People have liked it and bought it, and hopefully now we can uh, really try and have a career in music. Because sometimes we still don't believe it's all real. Well, we are looking forward to the gig tonight, and then uh, we hope that the lockout will uh, bring some creative stuff, and uh, you will you will come back stronger than ever. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks. Let's see. Hurts. It's the guy from stage, and we're coming back. Bis then. Ciao.